Hey everyone, let me share something interesting I found. I recently saw a Reddit post where someone called Seed VR2 their favorite image upscaler. They mentioned it only took 2 minutes for a 3 time upscale using a GPU with just 6 GB of VRAM. Here's the comparison image showing before and after the upscaling. Now let's look at the top comment on that post. It got 459 upvotes. Every time I see this comment, it makes me laugh. This person is a genius. I don't know who made the original post or this comment. If you happen to watch this video, I want to be clear. I don't mean to criticize the post. I just find that top comment really interesting. Okay, back to today's topic. I have a solution for fix the poor skin texture sometimes generated by Seed VR2. In a previous video, I shared a workflow using Supir and SRPO for upscaling that creates very lifelike skin texture. I'll put the link to that video in the description below. The workflow I'm showing today produces slightly better images than that previous one. It also uses less video memory, so 8 gigabytes should be enough. Let me show you some comparison images. First, here's the original input image. Her skin is too smooth and lacks realistic texture. Now let's compare the outputs after upscaling with two different workflows. The image on the left was generated by Seed VR2 plus SRPO. You can see the file name in the upper left corner. The image on the right was generated by Supir plus SRPO. Personally, I think the left image from Seed VR2 looks more three-dimensional. What do you think? Let's zoom in. The skin texture from Seed VR2 also looks better. Now, compare the lips. Which pair would you rather kiss? I think most people would choose the left one, right? Next, let's look at the eyes. The eyes generated by Seed VR2 have more light and detail. The eyelashes from Supir and SRPO look a little thick. In this example, the original input wasn't very small. It was 832 by 1216. Now let's see another example. This time, it's a true super resolution upscale because the original image is very small, only 350 by 350. Let's compare the outputs again. Once more, the left image is from Seed VR2 and SRPO. Comparing the skin texture, Seed VR2's result is smoother with less apparent texture. But look closely at the eyes. The eyes generated by Seed VR2 look more authentic with fewer artifacts. Now compare the winter hats. The details from Seed VR2 are also better here. Okay, after seeing these images, you're probably wondering how to combine Seed VR2 and SRPO for upscaling to get these crazy details. Let's jump into ConfUI and I'll walk you through this workflow. This workflow actually uses a two-stage upscaling process. The input image size here is 350 by 350, but you can input any size. In the first stage, I upscale it to 2048 by 2048. The new resolution parameter in this node controls the output size. I tested different values and found 2048 is a good sweet spot. To further enhance details, I use SRPO. That's this model. For the second stage upscaling, this is a GGF version of the original SRPO model, so it doesn't use a huge amount of VRAM. If your VRAM is still tight, there are smaller model sizes you can choose. Now let's look at the first group and talk about the Seed VR2 settings. The main node is this one, Seed VR2 Video Upscaler. As the name suggests, this node can also upscale videos. Since the batch size is set to 1, it's currently set up for image upscaling. There are many Seed VR2 models available. Here, I chose a very small 3B model. If you have more VRAM, you can choose larger 7B models. When you run a workflow, the model you select will download automatically. If you've used Seed VR2 before, you know it used to consume a lot of VRAM. The new version changes that. With this block swap node, you can run large models on GPUs with limited VRAM. It works by dynamically swapping transformer blocks between the GPU and the CPU memory during the process. You set this block to swap parameter to decide how many transformer blocks to upload to the CPU. 
Higher numbers save more VRAM but make the upscaling process take longer. I chose the balance value here, 16. If you need to save more VRAM, remember the maximum is 32 for a 3B model and 36 for a 7B model. Setting the offload IO components option to 2 can save additional VRAM, but it also increases the upscaling time. The input image isn't fed directly into the Seed VR2 video upscaler node. It goes through some processing first. This restore phase node helps fix artifacts on the face. Then, this FFHQ DAT model upscales the image, which is then downscaled to 0.5 megapixels. The FFHQ DAT model helps add realistic skin texture. We downscale it because Seed VR2 doesn't produce good results with very large input images. Based on my tests, 0. megapixels works well. After upscaling by Seed VR2, the image is sent to the next group using this image sender node. This image receiver node in the next group then gets the image. These two nodes are essential. Without them, the workflow will encounter errors. This group handles tailed upscaling using the FFHQ DAT upscaler model. I have it set for four tails, two rows and two columns. So each tail is 1024 by 1024. If your input image isn't square, try adjusting the row and column numbers so each tail is close to 1024 by 1024. Apply the same logic to the settings in the next group's tail node. This final group uses TTP tiles upscaling to help maintain image consistency. You generally don't need to adjust the parameters in these nodes. The default values work well. The main parameter you might want to tweak is the denoising strength in the K sampler. So that's how you combine Seed VR2 and SRPO for upscaling to achieve realistic skin texture. If you want this workflow file, you can get it through our community. I'll put the link in the video description below. If you found this video helpful, feel free to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.